Welcome to Proven Improbable. I'm your host, Maurice Jackson. Today's show is dedicated to investors that wish to discern the value proposition for uranium. We will identify a company that has proven management, good stewards of capital, and has distinguished itself as the world's most awarded uranium explorer. And finally, what actions you, the investor, need to take. Here to discuss these topics and more is the president, COO, and chief geologist for Fission Uranium, Ross McElroy. Thank you for joining us, sir. Nice to be with you here, Maurice. Thank you. Yeah, you know, full disclosure, I am a proud shareholder of Fission Uranium for the merits we will be discussing today. Ross, before we begin today's discussion, please share with investors the value proposition we have before us in uranium. All right. Well, if you're asking me why I think uranium is a is a value proposition, I think it's at a low point in the cycle right now. Uranium, like any other commodity, it's very cyclical. Uh, sometimes, some years, are, they're, the prices are very strong, and then other times they're low. And we're currently in a fairly low price environment of uranium. Um, but I think that we're uh, sitting on the edge of an increase in the prices. And the real reason for that, Maurice, is because the demand for uranium for nuclear power plants, which is uh, essentially part of a growing economy, a need for clean air. Uh, essentially, what, what's happening in China is the main growth engine for nuclear power generation. And so when you have increase in demand, uh, you have low prices, that will translate into higher commodity prices because at the low end of the cycle, mines have shut down. Um, the higher cost, low margin operations are, are basically out of business and have been for a while. Even some of the better quality uh, operating mines start shutting in, and that's really what's happened so far. Um, now you're at a point where the growth continues to expand, and the prices are actually, we're even seeing it now, they're starting to tick up in 2017, um, I think even towards the end of 2016, we were starting to see stabilization and growth. And what happens for shares, of course, they are uh, very much leveraged to the price of uranium, so when the price kicks up a little bit, the shares, once the momentum starts going, the perception and anticipation of higher prices really starts to drive the share prices of companies up. So I think that we're really seeing an improvement in uh, almost across the board in all uranium companies. But somebody like Fission, I mean, our price, share price is uh, already ticked up upwards of 15 to 20 percent off its lows that we saw in the latter part of 216. So there is value out there in uranium because it is a commodity that's in demand, uh, particularly in Asia, also in the Middle East. And so I think that uh, we're at the beginnings of a real bull market in uranium. You know, I know value investors are delighted to hear that. Ross, let me ask you this then. So have we finally moved out of this capitulation phase? I guess so. I mean, it's, it's pretty tough to call once you're in it, but I think that um, we're certainly off the, the real bottom bottoms that we saw in the Q3 of 2016, where uh, companies like Cameco, which is your main bellwether uranium producing uh, company out there, their share price was, I can't remember, but it was less than $11 a share and now they're upwards 13 or 14 dollars so they've come off bottom fission has come off bottom basically across the the board all uranium share prices have started to move upwards the price of the commodity itself is uh it's still very very low when you look at it how it's uh, it, how it has been say over the last 10 to 15 years it's at the low point, but I think capitulation has happened and it happened in Q3 of 2016, and now we're starting to see 
the recovery that people have been talking about and expecting. So I, I personally feel that uh, the capitulation point has passed, but only very recently. So whether it's truly passed, I guess we'll have to see how that plays out over the next month or two. But if it, if we really haven't hit there, um, we're pretty close to it. And I think it's in the rear view mirror at this point. You know, uranium investors value your expertise. And so I have to ask, uh, and you've briefly covered it, but can the price of uranium based on these fundamentals remain at these prices indefinitely? No, they can't. And the real reason for that is mining companies are in this business to make money. When you have low prices of uranium, they're not making money at on almost any of the deposits out there. Outside of some of the, the fields in Kazakhstan, basically there's nobody else that's really making money. There's a few uh, projects that are treading water, but nobody's really making money. If there's a demand, and we know there's a demand out there, there's building of reactors uh, to a huge degree, particularly in China, but uh, in Korea as well, uh, in the Middle East, as we've already talked about, this demand has to push the uranium prices up because it basically, the supply comes from the mines. The mines need to operate profitably. They're not doing so right now at these prices. I think you're going to see prices having to work themselves over $50 a pound. In some cases, in a lot of deposits, your average deposit is going to require $70 a pound uranium. So depending on how that supply-demand uh, fundamentals work over the, over the next short while, I think there's a, there's a real uh, signal that the uranium prices, well, we know they can't remain as low as they are right now or there's no supply to come onto the market. But in order to really meet the demand that's out there, prices are going to have to increase, and they're going to have to increase significantly. And the longer that we uh, keep uranium prices low, the faster and more violent that uptick in the uranium price is. We know it's coming. The longer you stretch it out at the low point, the, the more accelerated it grows when that time comes. And we think that that's uh, probably not too far away which is why I'm so ecstatic about the value proposition in uranium. So thank you for conveying that. Ross, let's discuss how investors can participate and take advantage of these market conditions. Who is Fission Uranium? Well, Fission Uranium has been around, I guess the original iteration of Fission Uranium came uh, out of the mid 1990s when our current CEO and founder of the company actually had another uh, company started up called Strathmore Minerals. So Fission was born out of Strathmore, and it was really uh, born to advance the grassroots projects that we had up in Canada, particularly in the Athabasca Basin. So in 2006, Fission was spun out of Strathmore, started trading as its own entity, and, it was, and that was when I joined the group. So. Uh, I partnered with, with Deborah and Hal, our CEO. We started to advance our grassroots projects. We actually made a discovery in the Athabasca Basin back in 2010 on a project that we call the Waterbury Lake Project. We sold that asset to Denison Mines. Uh, shareholders uh, were able to profit from from that discovery and from that sale of that asset, we received over 70, about $75 million uh, in Denison stock for that asset. We spun off at that time a earlier stage project that we call PLS. That was put into the new spinoff company called Fission Uranium. Um, and PLS was a project that we really liked at the time, but we hadn't really made much of a discovery. We did have one intersection at the time that we spun out Fission Uranium Corp, but it was really, you know, just a couple of holes into a new discovery. At that point, um, once we had the new entity, Fission Uranium Corp, it was basically the winter of 2013. We were aggressive on our new discovery, and 
in so doing over the course of a couple of years, we were able to outline which is uh, one of the best uranium deposits now worldwide. It's, it's very shallow, it's large, it's high grade, it's in the Athabasca Basin, and its shallowness, basically the, the deposits very close to surface, is what really sets it apart from every other high grade deposit in the world. So near to surface means more viable. And so uh, it's an open pitable type deposit, low cost, uh, high value because of its high grades, which is something the Athabasca is famous for. That's what fission uranium has as its one and only asset, the PLS project with the triple R deposit. And that is uh, really the best uranium deposit in the world. Now, you mentioned the grade. Uh, talk to us about the grade, if you would. Sure. Uh, there's two parts to the grade story um, on the triple R deposit. The overall grade of the deposit averages around 1.7%. Now, when you consider that the average uranium deposit worldwide is around 0.1%, so in other words, a tenth of a percent is the average grade. Well, ours is grading 1.6% overall, which is orders of magnitude <laughs> higher, about 10 to 15 times higher grade than other deposits elsewhere around the world. But the other story in the grade is a high grade core that runs down the whole spine of the deposit along the strike length from one end to the other. The grade of that zone is over 20% U308. So it's orders of magnitude higher than the average grade of the deposit itself. So it's a very, very high grade. That's in the realm of the best, highest grade deposits in the world, uh, MacArthur River, Cigar Lake, they average 15 to 20 percent, and that's what our high grade zone averages at PLS. So you're looking at some of the world's highest grade uranium assays, and what differentiates this, as I've already mentioned, is that it's very near surface, whereas the other high grade deposits are significantly deeper, more expensive to extract, whereas this is closer to surface, and ultimately, if this project becomes a mine, that becomes a very low-cost operation. That is truly astounding. Uh, Ross, if you would, share with our listeners, what is the stock symbol? The stock symbol on the Canadian uh, stock exchange um, is SCU on the Toronto exchange. We also trade over the counter in the U.S. on F-C-U-U-F. You know, thank you for sharing that. You know, for listeners, it's important to note that fission uranium, year after year, has been hand-selected by legendary investor Rick Rule to be one of the featured exhibitors at the Sprott Natural Resource Symposium, which is quite the distinction. But the merit is not accomplished because of the value proposition of uranium. It's because of the people. You know, I recently had an opportunity to uh, conduct interviews with legendary investors Rick Rule and Doug Casey, and they both conveyed that their number one criteria for investing are the people. Rick conveyed specifically, investing in the best of the best people will beat the best commodities. Now, Ross, Fission Uranium is a company that has really distinguished itself by becoming the world's most awarded uranium explorer. Let's discuss the people that have made fission uranium such a success. Um, you know, as we noted, uh, Mr. McElroy, yourself, and the CEO, Dev Randhawa, are serially successful. What has been your formula for success? Well, Dev and I have uh, been in partnership now for about 10 years, and it's been very successful. Um, you know, we have different strengths. Uh, we're, we're, we, together we run the company, we are able to raise money to market what it is that we're doing and actually put that money that we do raise to real use in the ground. And that's what's um, led to our discoveries, uh, which under the, the previous Fission Uranium, or sorry, Fission Energy, and now with Fission Uranium, that's two major discoveries in a very short time. And so 
um, I think we've been very successful. So with, with uh, Deb and myself running the company, but we built together a great team. Uh, we have got an incredible technical team, which is the best of the best out there. There's no other company that has such a skill set there. We've got an extremely strong marketing team. Uh, you know, we I think we've just covered all bases, um, and we've been very successful. We have loyalty within the group. Everybody that works with us has, has been successful in, in previous uh, ventures prior to coming over to Fission, but we all work together very well. And I'd say, um, you know, that's really the reason that uh, – that we've been able to garner the awards that we have. I mean, they're, they're a testament to the, the projects that we have found, the deposits that we've found, the people running the company, and the overall chemistry that we have with everybody. You know, speaking of your, your technical team, I've been to the Triple R deposit and I've met the technical team. Uh, you have some truly dedicated geologists. You have the Vice President, Ray Ashley, you have Sam Hartman, Tony Gonzalez, and Grant Lockhart, just to name a few, it's just a, it's an, an amazing team, as you alluded to earlier. Uh, now, looking back at 2016, the mineralized trend for the Triple R deposit was extended significantly. Can you expand on this narrative? I sure can. The, the footprint that we have that we call the Triple, well, first of all, the resource estimate on the Triple R is on two zones. Uh, on the on one particular trend, and that's our R00E zone, and just to the east of it is the much larger and more significant R780E zone. Um, together, they make up around 1,300 meters of strike length. But in addition to that, and on either side of of the zone, we've been able to grow by discovery of high-grade zones along trend. Uh, we now have two major zones on the west side. We have the R840W zone, and on the eastern side, the R1620E zones. Neither of those two have yet um, gone into the resource estimate. We know that they will provide additional pounds to the overall deposit once we have enough holes in them that we're able to add them into the resource estimate. But basically, they've now outlined a mineralized trend of 2.63 kilometers long. Now, to put that in a little bit of context and perspective for your listeners, that is the largest mineralized trend in the Athabasca Basin. Um, so you normally have deposits that are I guess on on the scale of a several hundred kilometers, these are some of the bigger deposits, might be 700 kilometers, maybe 800, and some of the bigger ones, 1.3, 1.4 kilometers. We have a 2.63 kilometer trend and growing. Every time we step out on our programs, we're able to expand it. So this really, 2016 was really a big year for us because we are able to build in the uh, the 840 west zone into this mineralized trend and the 1620 and that's what's really put this remarkable footprint on so uh, we we know they're high grade we know they're very similar characteristics to the main triple r so that's really where we left 2016 off is showing that we have a very large and growing trend and by the way, every one of these zones has the same characteristic of high grade and near surface. So that's something that's over this 2.63 kilometer trend, all the mineralization is still very close to surface. You know, 2016 was just quite a, an impressive year. So kudos to you, sir. Uh, now looking forward here, please share the goals for 2017, beginning with the upcoming drill program. Right. Well, towards the end of December in 2016, we press released our up and coming winter program that we will probably get started drilling up on project around the third week or so of January. Um, the, the program is a six and a half million dollar budgeted program. And what that'll allow us to do is to drill about 34 holes in 10,000 
just a little over 10,000 meters. The focus of this drilling is twofold. We want to put additional holes into the 840 west zone in order to grow that and, as I mentioned, be able to put that zone into a resource estimate for the triple R deposit. And also on the other side to put additional holes into the R1620 east zone as well for the exact same reason. So we want to bring those two new zones into a resource estimate, building up from our basically 108 million tons that we're, or sorry, 8, 108 million pounds urea weight that's already outlined in the triple R deposit, grow it by whatever those two zones add to the overall deposit. That's part of the focus of the winter program. The other part is to test the numerous exploration targets outside of our main mineralized trend. What the PLS project has is a multitude of what we call EM conductors. EM conductors are these graphitic fault zones that are the key features for hosting high-grade uranium deposits in the Athabasca Basin. We have over 105 of these discrete EM conductor zones, which translates to around 300 kilometers of prospective trend on this property alone. Remember, our mineralized trend is the largest footprint in the Athabasca, 2.63 kilometers, and we have several hundred kilometers of prospective trend to systematically test over time and hopefully make new discoveries on the project. So. Part of our focus of the winter program, the 2017 winter program, will also be testing these other high-priority targets that our geophysicists and geochemists and structural geologists tell us uh, have a, you know, a better than average chance of finding new mineralization. And in fact, I just want to touch briefly on one one part of the exploration program, Maurice, and that's as we step out to the west of the triple R deposit, well, west of the 840 zone itself, if we go about 600 meters, this summer we tested an area out there that looked really, really attractive to us. The alteration was strong. The uh, pathfinder elements that we used to find high-grade uranium were very strong there. We had high boron, even high uranium for that matter, but it wasn't quite the high-grade that we're used to in our zones. But what it tells us is that we feel that we're into a new system and we're close to it with that drilling. So part of our drill testing this winter will will look, you know, put a couple holes into this new area that we actually like quite a bit and it's one of our high priority exploration targets. One hit can really change everything for this project and really open up the potential yet again. So Maybe we'll make a new discovery further out west to the, uh, of the mineralized trend with drilling this winter. Um, every year that we've gone into our drill programs, we've been able to find new areas, back them up with further drilling. Uh, in a lot of the cases, make new discoveries of high grade. And I think 2017 um, promises to be more of the same. In fact, we're very excited going into it. Uh, we always are. Our team, they're true explorers by nature. They really enjoy the targets that we've got uh, identified for this, this winter program. So look, um, look to us to start putting news out uh, once we get going on drilling. Um, we're always conscious of keeping our shareholders updated and current for uh, the activity that that we have going on so i think february will be a a busy month for news february and march as we move into the uh into the guts of the winter program well i know investors are going to be excited to see the uh, press releases as they will be coming out um ross what do you see as the catalyst for the next three to six months well i think that if we a continuation of the improvement in the fundamentals of the uranium market itself, which we're, we've started seeing over the last, I guess, probably four to six weeks. Uh, in particular, the last two weeks have been very good, seeing that the prices rise. We have that in conjunction with uh, continued success on our winter program here. I think 
shareholders are, you know, could be in for a, for a good year with us in, in, in 2017. So I guess, as I say, just to reiterate, if we can get uh, stability in the uranium market, increase in prices, increase in the uh, desirability for people to get into uranium stocks, they start seeing it. We have success at the at the uh, project level. I think we could be in for some pretty pleasant surprises in 2017. 2016 was a difficult year for shareholders. We made great steps in, on the project level, but the price of uranium was going the other way, and it was heading down, and so that naturally brought the price of the, the share down with it, uh, regardless of what uh, positive aspects were happening on the project level. But if we can start changing that, the fundamentals of the of the uranium sector itself can coupled with success at the project level i think uh, you know things are going to look pretty good for us well, and this is exactly why i want i'm so delighted to share with investors the merits of being a shareholder of fission uranium is just uh, it's remarkable everything that you've done and unfortunately the market has not recognized all the contributions uh, that you've done to actually increase the value and uh, this is a great opportunity for value investors for smart investors to come in and recognize not only the value proposition in uranium, but specifically within fission uranium. Uh, Ross, I'd like to end this today with the, my last question, and that is, what did I forget to ask? <laughs> well, um, I don't know if you forgot anything, but you know, I would also like to um, mention our support that we have uh, with our partnership which is now one year old with the Chinese utility CGN. CGN, were, they're the world's largest utility company out there. They're growing, they're the, the guys that are building the nuclear reactors in China. They are always on a constant hunt for security of supply and to be part of uh, the best project out there um, in order to provide future access for fuel to feed the nuclear reactors. CGN took a look worldwide to try and find the best projects out there. They identified fission uranium. They put a major investment into the company, bought 19.9% of the company uh, in January of 2016. That gave us almost $80 million in cash into the treasury. It's the strongest uh, validation and support that we could hope to have, um, a great partnership. Uh, and so that's something I, I wanted to mention, the fact that, that we are backed by uh, a great retail crowd, a great investment crowd, and also institutional. And, uh, and having a, a group like CGN behind us is, is really a, a great backstop. And so I think that we're sitting very well. We have a lot of money in the Treasury right now. We're going into 2017 with about $65 million in the Treasury. Um, and we've got a great program that we're just about to embark on. So that would be the uh, probably the final um, highlights that I would like to leave the, your listeners with. Now, Ross, if investors want to get more information regarding fission uranium, Please share the contact information. Sure, you could visit our website at fissionuranium.com. All of our presentations are up to date, they're current on there. We're actually uh, one of the few companies that provides a great deal of detailed disclosure on a whole by whole basis. You can uh, basically look at, at all the data that's gone into our project to get to the resource stage that we're at right now. Um, I encourage people to have a look at our website and view it. And I also want to mention one other thing that I think that an investors should spend some more time looking at, and that would be core box. And we keep our project on there. And what it is is a simple 3D visualization uh, web page where different mining companies can put their data on there and investors can look at the deposits in 3D, spin them around, 
sort it out by grade, and you'll just see how well the, the triple R deposit at PLS holds together. Compare that against any other deposit in the world, and you'll really see that the merits of this are pretty easy to grasp once you, you see it visualized. So have a look at us on CoreBox, but also visit our website and look for presentations. And please uh, feel free to contact myself or anybody uh, in the investment relation group. Uh, we're always happy to, to talk to shareholders, um, current ones and future shareholders. And last but not least, please visit our website, www.provenandprobable.com. Through Miles Franklin Precious Metals Investments, we offer gold, silver, platinum, and palladium, offshore storage, and safe deposit boxes, which are fully insured and secured by Brinks, and self-directed IRAs. The website, again, is www.provenandprobable.com. Ross McElroy of Fission Uranium, thank you for joining us today on Proven and Probable. Thank you for joining us today on Proven and Probable. Remember to like and subscribe for more conversations with the most respected names in the natural resource space. Check out our website at www.provenandprobable.com. The information presented on Proven and Probable is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice, or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor.